In Huddersgate, famed for its tram lines, up north where it's boring and slow, Stanley Bagshaw resides with his grandma at number four, Prince Albert Row. One Saturday morning, our Stanley gave Grandma her mid-morning drink and said, Can I go to the pictures? There's a cowboy film showing, I think. Now Stanley, being kind and obliging, always ran lots of errands for Gran, so she gave him the money to get in. Oh, thanks very much, said our Stan. The film was a classic by Shakespeare. Doesn't look very thrilling, thought Stan. He was thinking he perhaps wouldn't bother when he happened to notice this man. He was sat on the steps of the entrance. Stan knew him. It was Arnold Crumb. He was holding this crumpled up letter and looking exceedingly glum. Are you feeling poorly? said Stanley. Or are you just having a rest? The cinema manager looked up and said, I'm what's known as depressed. It says here my films are all rubbish, the manager said with a frown. Now a man from head office is coming. He'll probably close the place down. Can I help at all? said our Stanley. The manager said, well, you could. You could clean the projection room for me. Don't suppose it'll do any good? The projection room was really pokey, and inside was this big grey machine. That there is the cine projector. That shows the films onto the screen. It came out of the ark, if you ask me. I've only just had it repaired. If you need me, I'll be in my office. I'll be back in a bit, if I'm spared. Stan had got a bit weary of dusting, when on this high shelf he espied all these boxes with interesting labels, and he thought that he'd just peep inside. He could just reach the one at the bottom. He nudged it a little, that's all, but it caused all the others to wobble. They wobbled and started to fall. They came toppling down with a clatter. By gummy, said Stan, what a lot. For the films had burst out of the boxes and tangled themselves in a knot. But being of a practical nature, Stan was not too dismayed by the sight of the films all knotted and tangled. He thought, I can soon put that right. He got the projectionist scissors and a big roll of sticky tape. Then he cut the films up into pieces and stuck them together again. In quite a short time, he had finished. Well, that didn't take very long. No one will know what has happened, he thought. But that's where our Stanley thought wrong. Arnold Crumb stuck his head round the doorway. Have you finished the dusting? He said. Oh, I see that you've tidied the films up as well. Our Stanley just nodded his head. Then the manager said, Here's a ticket. Not much of a present, I know. But you might as well have it for nothing. This could be the very last show. The man from head office was sitting next to Stan in the very front row. He sat there, all stern and important, as the cinema lights went down low. The film was a serious drama about this old bloke called Macbeth, who kept having these terrible visions and getting upset about death. The usherette thought it was boring. The man that wrote this should be shot. But thanks to our Stan and his scissors, there was a slight change to the plot. It was just at the height of the drama in the scene he was meant to go mad in. Macbeth cried, Ghost, pray tell me thy name. 
And the ghost replied, My name's Aladdin. Aladdin then rubbed with a duster on the oil lamp he had in his hand, and a rather large Chinese genie said, Master, what is your command? Bling me a great flying carpet, or some magical means for to fly. At which point, a World War II fighter plane came swooping down out of the sky. This is Biggles to aircraft control room, requesting permission to land. Are you receiving me? Over, said the genie. What is your command? said Macbeth. What are these strange voices? Hath my hearing become so defective? And who is that figure that lurks by yon door? It was Sherlock Holmes, the detective, who said, Watson, do you see this footprint? I can tell by the print of the toe. It was made by a world-famous runner whose name is Sebastian Coe. The event is the 800 meters and lined up for the race at the start were Andy Pandy, Mahatma Gandhi and Napoleon Bonaparte. On your marks, said the starter, get ready. And he raised his pistol up high, at which point a World War II fighter plane came diving down out of the sky, cried Biggles. I say, we're being shot at. There's bandits below us. Look out. And there, down below, was Chief Bleeding Toe and a party of Indian scouts. Chief Bleeding Toe said, Stagecoach coming. Him down by bend in Big River. But as the stage came round the corner, Dick Turpin said, Stand and deliver! Give me all of your money! Trinkets and jewels, things like that! The highwayman held out his pistol and an arrow went <laughs> through his hat. Meanwhile, Macbeth was having a vision. Forsooth, I am chilled to the marrow. Is this a dagger before me I see? Said Robin Hood. No, tis an arrow. But hearken, the sheriff is coming. The sheriff said, go for your gun. The starter lifted his pistol and Biggles dived out of the sun. Meanwhile, back in his castle in Scotland, Macbeth had gone clean round the bend. Forsooth, all is done, I'm near finished, he cried. Which was true, because the sign said, the end. The manager was quite delighted. The man from head office was too. I think that that film is a classic, a cultural classic, don't you? Stan said that he had quite enjoyed it. After all, he had got in for free. Then he said that he'd better be going, cause I've got to get home for me tea. Have you had a nice time? Said his grandma when our Stan got back home for his tea. I've just seen a cultural classic, said Stan. Nothing much ever happens to me.